To be a successful fighter, I think you really need uh, to put in a lot of hours, a lot of work, uh, be patient, and uh, just don't quit, and literally give it everything you got. You can't, it's not something that you can just do half-assed. You've got to give it everything or you won't be successful. What does it take to be a fighter? To answer questions from my family who just don't understand. What does it take? To change the perception of who I was to the man I am today. What does it take? To never give up, even though I have every reason to. What does it take to train every day, even though my body's screaming at me to quit? What does it take to come back from an injury that the doctors told me would end my career? So, what does it take to be an MMA fighter? What do you think? Devin Smith is a professional mixed martial artist with a record of zero wins and one loss. He fights out of La Ronge, Canada and had an extensive amateur background before turning professional. I got started as, as a child. I was a huge fan of uh, Muhammad Ali. And uh, so I, I, I idolized him. I watched all of his old fights and everything. And then as I got older, I just grew into all types of combat sports. And I had some friends who were traveling to Asia and they talked me into going and I decided to go and uh, learn kickboxing in Thailand while I was there. And I was so excited and I kept telling everybody and then finally when it came down to it, I told so many people that it was too late to back out. So I kind of talked myself into it like that. And that's pretty much how I got into fighting is I just told so many people about it that eventually, even though I was terrified, I had to do it. After losing his professional debut to Hard Knocks regular Justin Schmidt, Devin changed venues for his training, transitioning to Progressive Fighting Academy in Lethbridge. Now I train at uh, Progressive Fighting Academy in Lethbridge, and it's, uh, it's been fantastic. For pretty much all of my previous fights, I trained just uh, with friends in a garage, and uh, though it was good and it got me pretty far, it's a completely different experience at Progressive Fighting Academy. It's, uh, there's just a ton more guys to train with, a ton more knowledge, and uh, it's really brought my confidence and all my experience and talent up to a new level for sure. Uh, martial arts has been, I'd say, pretty helpful to who I am and where I'm at now. It, I think without it, I, was, I probably wouldn't be doing up to anything good for sure. You know, it, uh, it's really calmed me down from where I was when I was younger and uh, kept me physically fit and active and put me in a really good spot. I'd say the training has really helped me just stay level-headed and calm in a lot of situations where it's given me a lot of self-control, where I think some people have, are lacking that. Just training and competing for a fight and knowing my capabilities and everything has really helped me to just have good control of myself. I definitely think mixed martial arts and, and the success I've had has been pretty helpful in with how I handle any situation now. It, uh, there was a point where the success almost at first got me in more trouble because it gets to your ego and then it also, you get a lot of people who, are, who almost want to test themselves, get, oh this guy's a mixed martial artist and this guy's done this or that. But uh, as time has passed and fights have passed, I've won and I've lost and really that's, that's where I know the competition is and outside of, outside of the cage, it just, it, it doesn't mean anything to me anymore to where I'd, back in the day it would almost, you know, I'd, I'd want to prove myself to anyone. Now I know what I'm made of, where I'm at, and I don't need, I don't need to prove myself to anyone. 
Honestly, I, I don't know what uh, what's in a person that can make them a fighter. You know, I think uh, even among fighters, there's people who are completely different. Like myself, uh, before a fight, I, I keep telling myself, I'm, I'm not going to do this again, and almost talking myself out of it. And then I fight, and then afterward, I tell them, there's no way that I couldn't not do it again. You know, I just, I love it so much, but there's always moments that are like almost completely opposite. So it's hard to say what it is in me that, that uh, gives me that drive. Devin has great support from his family. His first training partner was his younger brother, Austin, the kitchen sink smith. Austin, along with Devin's parents, have been instrumental in the success that Devin Smith has had. My brother's, uh, yeah, had one fight with Hard Knocks and uh, did very well. And since then, he's, he's trained with me, but not as consistently. But I'm looking forward to seeing him hopefully back inside the cage. And uh, I think that he will have as much success as me, if not more, in Hard Knocks. He, he got started in mixed martial arts a lot younger than I did, so I think he's got the potential. He's got a lot more uh, opportunity than I did at his age. So I'm looking forward to having him back and attending his fights. My dad pretty much comes to all my fights. He loves watching them. And my, my mom has never watched a fight, and I don't think she ever will. She's terrified. She, uh, she's always the first one I call after a fight, but she, she never wants to see it. She just won't do it. She's always afraid for me and uh, just doesn't like it. But she's, she's always supported me. She'll never watch it. Starting his career in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship with five straight wins in the heavyweight and light heavyweight divisions, Devin Smith relied on takedown defense and damaging punches for success. As the level of opponents increased, Devin found himself lacking in one major aspect of MMA. Since my, since my two losses with Hard Knocks, I've, uh, I've since went to Progressive Academy in Lethbridge and really developed on all my areas of weakness. And uh, in those two fights, there, there, there was a lot to learn from them. So I feel like I've, I've developed a lot since then. The, the fight with Phil Towler, it, uh, it was really weird for me because I knew what to expect from him and he did what I expected. And then somehow I still got caught. It's sort of a rookie mistake. And I'd love to live that over again, but because uh, I think it could go differently. And then my fight after that with Justin Schmidt, it, uh, like I said, it was a really exciting fight. It's not one that I'm ashamed of. I feel like uh, we put on a good show and it was sort of back and forth and I just uh, didn't have an answer. And going to Lethbridge and training, I think, has given me that answer. After my last fight, I, uh, I'd really thought that, that was gonna, I'd be successful in that one. And though I lost, it was an exciting fight, I think. And uh, I've watched it lots of times and it really was fun to watch. And, I feel like this will just give me a chance to get a win and as well be exciting just like the last fight. So I'm really looking forward to it. Right now, I'm sort of, I'm coming off a few losses and made, this is almost my make or break moment right here. And I've been training hard. And like I said, I'm now at a, at a very good gym and I feel like this is, this is my time to shine and this is what will really get me to the next level in the sport. Devin Smith's opponent for this fight is local fighter Zach Chalmers. Chalmers, 1-0 as a professional, is coming off his first win just five weeks prior to this event. The win, by a highlight reel standing guillotine, is still very fresh in the eyes of Hard Knocks fans. So I ended up getting into MMA was, I was contacted by my coach now, but a year ago he contacted me. Um, and he's a professional fighter, Jordan McKay. He was looking for a strength and conditioning coach. So he contacted me and we began uh, setting up a program uh, to get him ready for his next fight. And then along the way, we started talking about MMA and, and he knew that I was uh, obviously interested. Um, so he assessed my skills and, and sort of encouraged me to, to consider stepping into the cage and giving it a shot. So took his advice and here I am. My opponent, Devin Smith, from what I understand, has a lot of experience in the cage. He's had a ton of amateur fights, and I'm not sure how many pro fights he's had, but um, I believe it's one. And, uh, but he has a lot of experience in the cage, I know that. I know he's, he did well as a heavyweight and a light heavyweight, and I think he's bumped around some weight classes as well. So uh, he's tall, 
six foot three, I believe. So aside from that, um, all I've been doing to sort of prepare for him is just uh, train with the same tall partners that I always train with and, and work on uh, sparring with guys who have a reach similar. With his reach, that can be uh, a problem if you're not prepared for it. But um, I just always prepare for the best striker, the best grappler, whoever I'm going up against. I'm assuming that they're the best at everything. So whether he has a history of, of uh, knocking people out or not, doesn't really matter to me. I'm just preparing my, uh, the way that I always do. So I'm gonna go into it like any other fight. My last fight was at Hard Knocks 40, and that was my first professional fight, uh, first MMA fight at all. I didn't do any amateur fights. And it went really well, pulled off the win, a uh, quick one uh, against a, a guy who had a little bit of experience in the cage, but um, I just was in the right place at the right time and finished the fight off quick, 20 seconds. Uh, I have seen my opponents fight, and to be honest, I'm a little jealous because there's been several fights of mine in my amateur career where I had tried uh, standing guillotine, and I've always been told it's, it's very rarely successful, and to see that and to see the way he uh, choked his opponent unconscious was pretty impressive. Um, for me, I think with my experience, it's really gonna it's really gonna pay off. I know not to make a mistake like his his opponent made, and uh, being as there's not a lot to see there. I don't know really what to expect from him, but uh, from what I from what I've heard, we have similar styles, and so I won't be shooting in for a takedown like his opponent, and I think it should pay off for me. A lot of the opponents that I've faced have been uh, older than me, and uh, you know one of the one of the scarier opponents I've faced was 46, and so I don't think age uh, really affects anything. And my opponent now, I think he's he's 40. Uh, he he's an intimidating looking man for a 40 year old. So even though I've got a, a ton more uh, mixed martial arts experience, he's got a ton more life experience. So we'll see what pays off. Coming here in Zach's hometown is sort of like deja vu because uh, my first fight for Hard Knocks was uh, in Wade Baldwin's hometown and uh, he was a lot bigger and stronger than me and he had a ton of support and I came in there sort of feeling like the sacrificial lamb and uh, I just went out there and did my thing and came out on top and I feel like this could pay off the same way. Uh, winning, winning and losing doesn't really affect my, my emotion beforehand. I, even when I was on a, a good win streak, I'd still, I'd still be pretty nervous before a fight. And having lost a few, I, I still have the nerves. It's, uh, I'm not sure what it is. It, it's just, just uh, I, I'm always second guessing myself, but I'm always, always trying to push myself to, to push the boundary. And uh, if, if I'm successful after this fight, you know, I know that the next one I'll be scared, but I'll do it. When my next fight, uh, whether I win or lose this fight, in my next fight, you know, I, I think the nerves will still be there. I'll, I'll be scared, but I'm still going to step up and I'm going to do it. This school of Hard Knocks fight is a professional bout in the 205 pound division. And now, let's see the fighters. In the blue corner, he's 0-1 as a professional, 26 years old, and stands 6 feet, 3 inches tall. He weighed in at 204 and 1 half pounds. Fighting out of Progressive Fighting Academy from La Ronge, please welcome a Hard Knocks fighter, Devin, Mr. Boom Trump Smith! <laughs> and his opponent! In the red corner, he's 1 0 oh as a professional, 40 years old, and stands 5 feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 204 pounds, fighting a jump smash combat from Calgary. Please welcome a hard knock fighter, Zach the Barbarian Chalmers.
the referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Adam Cheadle. Adam Cheadle, our referee, as Zach Chalmers gets set to take on Devin Smith. Jeremy, the hardest thing for Zach Chalmers, I think, in this fight is going to be getting inside the reach of Devin Smith. Well, the reach is extensive for Smith, so it'll be interesting to see how Zach Chalmers deals with it. And he does have a win by a guillotine, and it's going to be another one. And it got to be a frustrated Zach Chalmers, and Mr. Boom Truck gets his very first professional win, ending Zach Chalmers by a guillotine. And got to be a happy Devin Smith. They call him Mr. Boom Truck. They've got to change it to the villain. Anytime there's a massive crowd support for one of Devin Smith's opponents, he ends that fight and ends it early. The winner by tap out to Tequiatine Choke at 28 seconds in the very first round in the blue corner, Devin, Mr. Boom Truck Smith! Devin Smith is your winner. He's gonna be in the center of the cage with Ryan. It's been a while since we got to talk here in the center of the cage, Devin. It has. Uh, they call you Mr. Boom Truck. I'm thinking they got to start calling you the villain. Every time the guy packs the room against you, you come out, you end the fight quick. Good to get your first pro win. Oh, it feels amazing. It's first time in Calgary I've been able to talk to you, so I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. You come out, uh, you, you moved down to Lethbridge, joined up with the guys from PFA down there. How big a difference did they make in your game? Uh, at PFA, it's obviously the whole, the difference is now where my weaknesses are, I've got strengths, and I think I showed that tonight, and I'm gonna continue working with them, and sky's the limit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner, Devin Smith. Well, to take 30 seconds, I could replay you the whole fight. As it, uh, it ended in 28 seconds, and um, we squared off, sort of felt each other out for a second, and uh, I think he knew that I wanted to stay long and use my range, and he came in close, and grabbed a hold of my leg and I just I grabbed onto the guillotine choke and squeezed as hard as I could and managed to get the tap. I felt good. I just uh, found myself in a bad position there. He got the choke in pretty deep and uh, once he had it in it was it was gonna be a tough one to get out of. Uh, the plan was exactly what he thought it was. It was to stay long, use my reach. I, was, I got a substantial reach on him so I thought I'd just stay long. I got a lot of power in my punches even though they're far and I thought for sure that's that's how it was gonna go. I. Uh, I played the fight a thousand times in my mind and it never ended like that. I started coming in on him and I saw an opportunity to maybe take the legs so went in on his leg and he did the right thing and, and countered with a guillotine and he got it in nice and deep. Uh, I felt great, you know, I, I was nervous the days leading up to it but once I got out there I felt, I felt fantastic. It's a, it's a position I've been in before being uh, the underdog and sort of the, against the hometown fighter and uh, you know, seeing him walk out and I couldn't hear anything over the crowd roaring for him and uh, it just brought back memories and those, those were memories of me coming out on top and so I, I felt fantastic. Training's been really good. Um, it's only been five weeks since my last fight. So a couple weeks off after the fight uh, kind of, I think maybe set me back a bit. Came down with a little bit of a uh, sinus virus, kind of put a halt on my training. But I've, I've felt really good for the last few weeks. Um, I felt really good coming into the fight. And, um, you know, he just, he got a good position on me. It feels pretty good, I guess, to get the guillotine submission, knowing that that's how he got his victory. Um, I said before that I've been really jealous of how he got that guillotine because it's something I've tried in the past, a standing guillotine like that, and I've never successfully accomplished it. And uh, this time to get it against him, who's someone who's choked someone unconscious with it, it, uh, it felt great. Uh, well, last fight, I uh, had some issues the night before with the um, medical, and so I thought the fight was off, and then I just kind of threw my nutrition out the window when I thought the fight was canceled, and so the next day, I probably came in a little bit puffy from the night before, just not eating right and, you know, just uh, not refueling after a, after a weight cut like you're supposed to, and, and so everything went uh, proper this time. I did my weight cut, and everything went great, but... Uh, just didn't, uh, you know, didn't turn out for me the way I wanted it. Uh, things are going to be a lot the same for me training. I, uh, I've been going to, this is my first fight since training at Progressive Fighting Academy, and I think it shows that I, I've really worked on my weaknesses. This is a point where typically if I'm taken to the ground, 
opponents have had their way with me and I've come out on the losing end and this time I showed you know what I've developed those skills I've worked on it and I'm gonna continue to work on it and make them stronger um, I'm just gonna keep doing what I do and I'm gonna keep training the way that I, I've been training um, some days are good days some days are bad days and and um, some days your opponent has a better day even if you're on a good day so uh, it is what it is you know, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it but I will definitely keep working the way that I'm working and, and prepare the way that I normally do. Um, well, I'm hoping to fight again soon, you know, I didn't, there's no, no injuries, I feel great, I'm uh, confident, so I'm hoping, yeah, hopefully next card maybe. After a big win by Devin Smith, he pushes his record even to one and one. More importantly, he stops his losing streak in the Hard Knocks cage at two. Now, with six wins under his belt in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship, Devin knows the secret to his continued success is to keep on getting as many fights as he can. I have been here with Hard Knocks for a long time and I'm going to continue with Hard Knocks for as long as I can and they've been great to me and I feel like they're my key to getting to the next level. And um, yeah, I feel like if I just keep training and pushing myself that I can get to a UFC level and I'm confident that I'll be there one day.